Hey guys, in this video I'm going to present an old but nice problem from the US AMO 1982, namely problem 4. We are asked to prove that there exists a positive integer k such that for any integer n greater than or equal to 0, we have that k times 2 to the power of n plus 1 is composite. We are going to think about this problem in quite a constructive way. In other words, we want to think about what properties does k need to have in order for this number to always be composite. One way to make a number composite is by making it have a small prime divisor p. And in that case, as long as this number doesn't equal p, it will be composite, of course. k times 2 to the power of n plus 1 is always odd, so p equals to 2 will not give us anything. On the other hand, for p equals 3, we get more interesting behavior. Namely, 2 to the power of n will be congruent to 1 modulo 3 if um, 2 divides n and 2 otherwise. So we get k times 2 to the power of n plus 1 will be congruent to k times 1 plus 1 if 2 divides n and 2 times k plus 1 otherwise. If k is divisible by 3, then again none of these numbers will ever be 0 modulo 3. Otherwise, if k is 1 or 2 mod 3, then we get that every second such term is divisible by 3 and therefore composite if large enough. In conclusion, we have found out that if we choose k in a suitable residue class modulo 3, then for every second n, we have that k times 2 to the n plus 1 will be composite. Note that the divisibility of k times 2 to the n plus 1 by 3 only implies that it is composite if this number is larger than 3. And therefore, we need to make sure that this is always the case. And in this case, it suffices to assume that k is greater than or equal to 3. Now, we have already found a way to make sure that every second term of our sequence will be composite. To cover the rest of the sequence members, we want to take a look at what happens if we consider divisibility by small primes other than 2 or 3. So let p greater than or equal to 3 be a prime. In this case, the sequence 2 to the n modulo p will again be periodic but not necessarily with period 2, as was the case for p equals 3, but the period of this is the order of 2 modulo p. Therefore, we can make sure that every odd p of 2 term of our sequence will be composite, given that we chose k mod p in a suitable way, and we also want this number to always be greater than p, so we just choose k greater than or equal to p. To clarify what k being in a suitable residue class modulo p means, I want to notice or just write down that k times 2 to the a plus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo p if and only if k is congruent to minus 2 to the minus a mod p, which is just a mod p condition on k. Moreover, since 2 to the n has period order of 2 modulo p mod p, we get that this is also equivalent to that equation holding for a plus t times odd 2 modulo p for any integer t. So if we choose k like this, and also greater than or equal to p, then every odd p of tooth term of our sequence will be 0 modulo p, and therefore composite. Since we want all terms of our sequence to be composite, we now need to basically cover every term with at least one prime in such a way. The problem is that covering the natural numbers with arithmetic progressions is not that easy. One way we can make this into an easier task is by only considering arithmetic progressions with distances that are powers of 2. For example, with an arithmetic progression of length 2, one of length 4, and 2 of length 8, if we choose their starting values appropriately, 
we can indeed cover all of the natural numbers with them. Since 2 to the 2 minus 1 equals 3 is only divisible by the prime 3, that is also the only prime such that the order of 2 equals 2. So we now search for other primes where the order of 2 are small powers of 2. We note that odd p of 2 equals 2 to the l is equivalent to 2 to the 2 to the l congruent 1 modulo p, but 2 to the 2 to the l minus 1 not congruent 1 modulo p. Since this number is the square of that, all of this is equivalent to 2 to the 2 to the l minus 1 congruent minus 1 modulo p, or another notation, p divides 2 to the 2 to the l minus 1 plus 1. So let's consider these numbers and their prime factors. l equals 1 yields 2 to the 2 to the 0 plus 1, which is 3. For 2, we get 2 to the 2 plus 1, which is 5. And l equals 3 yields 2 to the 2 to the 2, which is 2 to the 4 equals 16 plus 1. We notice that all of these numbers are primes, which is in fact bad for us, because as I already mentioned, it would be good for us if we had, for example, a sequence of length 2, 1 of length 4, but 2 of length 8, because then we could cover all of the natural numbers with those arithmetic sequences. This would be possible if this term had at least two prime factors. Since any of the following terms will have at least one prime factor, of course, we would be done if we could find a sequence member that is not a prime. This is in fact the case, but the smallest l for which 2 to the 2 to the l minus 1 plus 1 is not prime is l equals 6. This number is so huge that Fermat actually conjectured that all numbers of this form are primes. In other words, he couldn't compute it or at least show that this is not a prime. Primes of this form are called Fermat primes, and it is well known that not all numbers of this form are Fermat primes. One could cite this result and therefore finish the proof here. Instead, we will give a construction where we can do all the calculations ourselves. And to do this, we will now focus on primes where the order of 2 is not a power of 2, but a power of 2 times 3. So let me erase the board and bring these three primes together with their orders to the top. The primes 3, 5 and 17 give us arithmetic progressions with lengths 2, 4 and 8. And therefore, we can now cover every term except 1, 8. We now take a look at primes such that this period is in the next simpler form. And what we do there is to take a look at primes where 3 divides the order of 2. To cover this remaining 8, it is enough to find at least 3 primes such that the order of 2 modulo p equals t, where t is a multiple of 3 and divides 24. A naive way to do this is to just consider the number 2 to the t minus 1, because then p must be a divisor of it. For example, 2 cubed minus 1 equals 7, which is a prime and satisfies the property that order of 2 modulo 7 equals 3, so we can write this down. We wouldn't want to compute 2 to the 24 minus 1, but we can use the fact that we have seen before, namely if 2 divides t, then we must have p divides 2 to the t half plus 1. So let's take a look at these numbers and their prime divisors. t equals 6 gives 2 to the 3 plus 1, which is 9, so we get no new primes. t equals 12 gives us 2 to the 6 plus 1, which is 65, or 5 times 13. 5 is not new, so let's take a look at 13. Since 13 satisfies this for t equals 12, its order or the order of 2 is a divisor of 12 and not a divisor of 6. Lastly, to prove that for 13 we have a 12 here, we need to show that the order of 2 is not a divisor of 4, but 2 to the 4 minus 1 is 15 and not divisible by 13. In the last case, we have 2 to the 12 plus 1, 
which we can also write as 2 to the 4 plus 1 times 2 to the 8 minus 2 to the 4 plus 1. The first factor is 17 and here we get uh, 256 minus 16 plus 1, so 241. 17 is already in that list. What about 241? It is smaller than 16 squared and not divisible by 2, 3, 5, 7, 11 or 13 and therefore it is indeed a prime. So what is the order of 2 modulo 241? It divides 24 but not 12 because 241 satisfies this for t equals 24. Now if we could prove that the order doesn't divide 8 it would indeed follow that it is equal to 24. But 2 to the 8 minus 1 lies somewhere strictly above 241, which is this expression, and below 2 times 241, and therefore it is clearly not a multiple of 241, and therefore we get that this order equals 24. In total, if we choose k in a suitable residue class modulo 3 and 5 and 17, we will cover 7 eighths of the terms. By choosing k in a good residue class modulo 7 and 13 and 241, we can cover three distinct thirds of the remaining eighths. And therefore, by the Chinese remainder theorem, there exists a k that satisfies all of these conditions simultaneously. Clearly, we can also choose k large enough, and therefore, we are done. <laughs>